In our previous lecture, we have seen how to calculate the magnetic flux density using Bio Savart law and as well as magnetic vector potential. Now, in a region when there is no current density, then we can write the Maxwell equation as del cross B is equal to zero since whenever we have steady current density sources we have del cross b is equal to mu naught j however when this is equal to zero then we have this equation now in this case this is very similar to the equation of electric field in electrostatics case and we know that for a vector whose curl is equal to zero it can be represented by a scalar quantity like uh, we denoted or represented the electric field by the gradient of the scalar quantity called the potential. Similarly, for the regions where there is no current density, then we can represent this magnetic flux density or we will later study magnetic field intensity by gradient of some scalar quantity called magnetic scalar potential or we can write b is gradient of minus mu naught gradient of the magnetic scalar potential but please note that this is only a special case and valid whenever there are no source of the current densities now since uh, we have defined this scalar magnetic vector potential then we can also define the potential difference using now gradient of any scalar quantity dot dl from point 1 to 2 is simply dvm from point 1 to 2 is equal to vm at point 2 minus vm at point 1 and this will be equal to minus of on putting the gradients value like this minus of 1 by mu naught from point 1 to point 2 b dot dl so all the mathematics is similar to whatever we have seen in our electrostatics case now since similar equations have similar solutions then we can use all the concepts of finding electric field from scalar potential uh, can be utilized whenever this equation holds that is whenever there are no source of the steady current density then that is when the curl of this uh, magnetic flux density is zero then we can utilize a scalar magnetic potential and similar to this uh, electric potential this is simply given by 1 by 4 pi this is the magnetic charge density of course there are no uh, in real life there are no magnetic charges but since we are just taking a hypothetical case or equivalent case so we can calculate the magnetic scalar potential from this hypothetical magnetic charge density rho m now similar to the electric dipole we can write that there exists a magnetic dipole given by the magnetic charge into the distance between the negative and the uh, positive magnetic charge now we have seen in our previous lecture that in reality the magnetic dipole is simply the current and the area so this is actually 
equivalent to the magnetic dipole however for our hypothetical case whenever we are thinking that uh, uh, magnetic charges exist then we can utilize this kind of mathematical formula now we have seen that the magnetic vector potential was given by m cross ar over 4 pi r square and this was i think mu naught so we have derived this equation in our previous lecture now if we consider this case that is when the curl of the magnetic flux density is zero then we can write similar to the electrostatics case the scalar magnetic potential simply as m dot a r over 4 pi r square you should know that since in our definition we have written that b is equal to minus mu naught gradient of vm and we have subsumed this mu naught here so it is not coming in any of these formula so this is uh, how we can find the magnetic scalar potential in a place or in a region when there are no uh, source of charge current densities uh, due to a normal uh, magnetic dipole we can either utilize this formula or this formula in the region where there are no charge uh, this current densities now let us see how to utilize this concept to make our life easier although we will not be using this concept much because this is not what uh, is actually equivalent to the practical or real scenario because we do not have any magnetic charges so this is just a artificial mathematical construct and uh, that's why we will not be using it further but still at some places it makes our life easier now whenever we are able to you know utilize the concepts of electrostatics which we have studied and the situation are similar we would like to you know utilize these uh, magnetic charge concept so let us see one of that scenarios how to utilize this concept now we have seen in our previous lectures in electrostatics the case of polarization now similar to the dielectric polarization there are magnetic materials which undergo magnetization although the explanation of magnetization involves quantum mechanical effects and no classical theory is exactly going to give us correct answers without we take into account of the quantum mechanical effects however for our present situation or our level of understanding normal classical ideas are equally acceptable uh, with the hint that uh, most of these ideas are incomplete or not exactly 100% accurate since the magnetization effects are actually governed or explained by quantum mechanics. Now in the classical model of an atom uh, we know that electrons are spinning on their own axis as well as they are orbiting the positively charged nucleus now these orbiting electrons they cause circulating currents and thus they form microscopic magnetic dipoles since a moving charge is equivalent to a current so these orbiting electrons are going to form a uh, magnetic dipole or circulating current uh, that is equivalent to a magnetic dipole furthermore since they are spinning also so it is again going to give us an equivalent magnetic dipole moment so these two kinds of magnetic dipole moment are predominantly there Sim uh, the nucleus is also going to create the spinning dipole moment but it is usually very you know low or less as compared to the uh, dipole moments of the electrons and that's why we usually do not see its effect since 
the mass of the nucleus is comparatively very high so the angular velocity of the nucleus is very small and that's why the magnetic moment of this nucleus due to spinning of this nucleus is very small compared to that of an electron and again i should be clear pretty uh, clear that the effect of magnetization is actually explained by quantum mechanics here we are just briefly trying to give you an overview using classical theory which is not exactly 100% accurate now in the absence of any external magnetic field the magnetic dipoles of the atom of most of the materials except those of the permanent magnets uh, they have random orientation as we have seen a similar, a similar case in uh, dielectrics where we have seen that there can be you know molecules which can be bipolar multipolar but since their orientation is you know uh, random so resultant polarization is actually zero uh, similarly here due to the random orientation of you know those uh, magnetic moments of the atoms and molecules most of the materials except the permanent magnets there is no net magnetic moment and whenever an external magnetic field is applied this creates both the alignment of those magnetic moments because of the spinning of the electron as well as they induce a magnetic moment due to change in the orbital motion of the electron so you see there are two effects of applying an external magnetic field what it does first it aligns those magnetic moments plus it also changes or induces magnetic moment due to change in the orbital motion of the electrons uh, now according to little further detail theory we can uh, find that uh, this uh, angular momentum as well as this dipole uh, this magnetic moment have certain relation and that relation although derivable which can be derived from classical theory also is quite okay uh, with some modification in quantum mechanics theory but we will not delve into that and we will just consider that whenever an external magnetic field is applied it is going to create two effects first the aligning of those magnetic moments second induction of some magnetic moment, moments due to the change in the orbital motion of the electrons now we just want to find some you know quantitative uh, idea since we have briefly told the qualitative idea now we want to show the quantitatively what can be done or what can be seen so for that similar to our electrostatics case we here are going to find some averaged picture that is a smooth picture by defining a vector called the magnetization vector m what is this vector now this is the averaged out picture giving us the total magnetic moment per unit volume let us say this is the small volume delta v and in the limit when this delta v is going to zero now we are assuming that there are n dipole moment in a volume so total dipole moments will be n delta v so k is varying from 1 to the all total dipole moments so this is actually the average dipole moment of each atom or the molecule whatever we are considering uh, practically we see that uh, generally uh, molecules are not that much you know uh, magnetic in nature since their electrons are actually balanced or you know uh, are uh, faithfully or uh, coupled so usually the magnetic effects are where where there are free electrons or some uh, ions uh, where there is some again some uh, spinning electron whose spins and uh, moments are not balanced so we are generally considering only the atoms instead of the molecules but again 
this is just an average picture this is the average dipole moment uh, sorry magnetic moment per atom and these are the total number of atoms in this small volume delta v which we are going to take to limit zero so similar to the dielectric case now we are trying to find the potential due to this so as i've just written above that potential due to a magnetic dipole in a region when there are no current densities is written as m dot ar over 4 pi r square so due to the small dipole moment in a small volume dv so i will have small dipole moment equal to m delta v so because of this the small magnetic scalar potential should be equal to dvm is equal to m delta v or m dv if we are just considering the differentials m dv dot ar over 4 pi r square now please remember that we are considering a case where there are no other uh, current densities in the region like this is the magnetic material we are considering the case where uh, this at this point p we are trying to find the potential or the scalar potential and there are no uh, current densities in this region of the point p now the potential due to this will be given by integration of dvm will give me the total potential the scalar magnetic potential equal to 1 upon 4 pi m dot ar dv prime where dv prime is showing that we are going to just uh, integrate over the volume where the magnetic charge or the magnetization is there over r square and over the volume v dash now similar to the dielectric case where we had similar equation 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught p dot a r over r square so from that we found that uh, the dielectric can be considered to be equivalent to of two char kind of uh, charge densities one was the volume charge density and other was the surface charge density so this was what we found in the case of dielectrics so again the equation is similar so we can write it as vm can be thought of made from two contribution the first contribution because of the volume magnetic charge density m dot a n prime over r d s dash over the full surface s dash so this is this is the surface charge density this part and another part we can derive it to be 1 upon 4 pi v prime i think it was plus del uh, del dot p in the case of dielectrics if i am not wrong and i remember it correctly then in that case it was del dot p instead of minus del dot p However, in the case of magnetics, uh, we will find that uh, here we know it was minus sign only. So there is no need to worry. This was minus. I am okay. So similar to that, we are going to have a volume magnetic charge density dv prime over r so the derivation of this equation is very similar to the derivation which we have done in the case of dielectrics i think in our lecture number 23 so you should visit lecture number 23 to see this derivation it is totally same 
सो दिस दिस इज इक्वल एंड टू ए सरफेस मैग्नेटिक चार्ज डेंसिटी गिवन बाय एम डॉट ए एन एंड दिस इज इक्वल एंड टू ए वॉल्यूम मैग्नेटिक चार्ज डेंसिटी गिवन बाय माइनस डेल डॉट एम सो इन आवर डायलेक्ट्रिक केस वी हैड ए वॉल्यूम चार्ज डेंसिटी गिवन बाय माइनस डेल डॉट पी एंड ए सरफेस चार्ज डेंसिटी वॉज गिवन बाय पी डॉट ए एन सो बोथ आर एग्जैक्टली सेम only the difference is m is replaced with p so you see that a magnetic material can be expressed or thought of equivalent of two kind of charge densities first is the volume charge uh, volume magnetic charge density and another one other, another one is the uh, surface charge density or the magnetic surface charge density although it is a artificial construct as i already told that there are no magnetic charges in nature so it is just for solving the questions easily so let us see how to utilize this concept to solve our questions easily so we will see a numerical example wherein we are given a cylindrical bar magnet so this is a bar magnet which is cylindrical in shape and we are told that it has uniform magnetization given as let us say this is z axis so it is told that it has uniform magnetization given as m not az now we need to find the magnetic flux density at a arbitrary distant point so let us say this is the center o now we need to find the equivalent or the magnetic flux density at a distant point p let us say this is point p which is very far away so this is at a distance r from let us say this is point p so this is at distance r and this is z axis this z axis uh is along the magnetization axis and let us say this is r plus and this is r minus that is the distance from the positive charges and the negative charges now we know that del dot p sorry del dot m is equal to 0 because this is uniform so its uh, differentiation is going to give us zero so it implies that there can will not be any equivalent volume charge density so rho m will be equal to zero however we know that there will be an equivalent surface charge density rho m s given as m dot an now for our case uh, for this curved surface area an is in this direction so for this m dot an will be equal to 0 because m is in this direction and an is perpendicular to it however for this case an is also in this direction and m is also in this direction so m dot an is equal to m so here this surface top surface is having a charge density given as m is equal to m not okay m not az dot az is equal to m not so the total charge qm and you see the sign is positive is equal to m not pi let us say the radius of this cylinder is b pi b square similarly here you see an is in this direction however m is in this direction so m dot an is equal to m not az dot minus az because an is equal to minus az so it is equal to minus m not so qm negative so you see this surface is going to have a negative surface charge density equivalent negative surface charge density negative is equal to again minus of m not pi b square so 
you see that this is now equivalent to a dipole with qm plus charge and qm minus charge separated by the height of this cylinder let us say the height of this cylinder is l now we know for a dipole which is ma making an angle theta at a distance r the potential is given as vm is equal to m dot ar over 4 pi r square is equal to m cos theta 4 pi r square now m here is equal to qm l cos theta 4 pi r square so vm is equal to now putting the value of qm is equal to m naught pi b square l cos theta over 4 pi r square so it is equal to m naught l b square cos theta 4 r square so you see we have found the scalar magnetic potential because of this uh, equivalent dipole which is representing a cylindrical uniformly magnetized magnet or magnetic material now we need to find the magnetic flux density so b is simply minus mu naught gradient of vm now we don't need to solve it we can directly write it from our you know previous uh, uh, experience of uh, the field due to a dipole mu naught upon 4 pi r cube into the dipole moment ar 2 cos theta plus a theta sin theta that you might remember in from the previous uh, in, uh, uh, lecture or you can see our lecture on the electric field due to a dipole uh, again the similar expression was there only mu naught was changed with 1 by epsilon naught so we can find the same this equation either by taking the gradient of this thing or we can write it directly like this so you see that uh, we have directly found the magnetic flux density due to a cylindrical magnetized material with uniform magnetization along the z axis so in this way we can utilize this artificial concept of magnetic charges for solving some numerical examples however i advise that this same example can be solved using equivalent current densities and those are more practical and more closer to the reality so we will utilize that in our next lecture so if you find that this lecture is helpful to you then please share and subscribe our youtube channel and also join the telegram group whose link is given in the description of this video thank you